All right, so let's solve a problem. We've got here a four kilogram block All right, let's solve a problem. Here we've got a four kilogram block that's sliding on a horizontal surface with a coefficient of friction of 0 0.25. The block slides towards a 5.5 kilogram block that is at rest. When the four kilogram block is 1.75 meters from the five kilogram one, its speed is, oh, that's a 5.5 kilogram one, its speed is 8.0 meters per second. What's the speed of the blocks the instant they stick and move off together after the collision? So this is a problem that combines some of our forces and work and acceleration and these things with a conservation of momentum problem, which hopefully we're getting pretty good at solving. So we're just adding one more step in there, and I think you won't have too much trouble with it. So let's take a look. First thing is we've got some values up here. The first one is the masses. So I'm going to start translating our written equation here and writing down the knowns. So we've got we've got the two masses. M1 is 4 kilograms, that's our sliding block, and M2 is 5.5 kilograms. All right. So moving on, we've got the coefficient of friction, k, has been given to us as 0 0.25, and it tells us that the block, the first block is 8 meters, or sorry, is uh, 1.75 meters away at the beginning of the problem. All right, so these are all the numbers that we had in the problem. We're gonna just make sure that we completely understand the situation, and then we can get rid of that and work with the translated version that we put together. So I'm gonna read through it just one more time quickly. We've got a block moving, hitting the other block. Friction's gonna slow it down as it's sliding across the surface until it hits the other block. And then the two of them are gonna stick and move along together. And that's what we're looking for is what's that velocity after they stick, right away, right after they stick. Because friction's gonna slow it down again, it would eventually stop, but I wanna know how fast it's moving right then, right after the collision, okay? All right, so here's our situation. We've got the first mass, the second mass, they're gonna to come together, and right before they collide, just a of the width of a hair away before they collide to each other. We're gonna have that this block here, M1, is moving with some velocity, we'll call it V1 right now. We don't know what that is, because it's gonna be slowing down. It should be smaller than eight meters per second, but we don't know what it is just yet. And then, at that same point, V2 is gonna be equal to zero. So I'm gonna write these down as the two numbers right before they collide, V1, V1 and V2. All right, so we don't need this anymore. And we've got this whole problem now translated. We've got all of our knowns and the situation drawn out in steps. Starts off here with this block moving quite fast. Coming over here, it slows down a little bit as friction slows it down. It gets to this other block, runs into it, and then they move together off to the right. And we're gonna solve each of these steps individually. To find this one here, what we actually need to know is conservation of momentum. We need to know the momentum total of both blocks at the beginning, and that's going to be set equal to the momentum final of both blocks at the end. But to get that, we need to know V1. So I'm going to have a solve for V1 first. All right, so we have here a force diagram for this block. We know friction's gonna slow it down, so we're probably gonna to wanna to find the acceleration. We can do that by looking at our force diagram. We've got, since it's on a flat surface, we've got a gravity force and a normal force that are gonna cancel each other out. They're both gonna be equal to what the gravity force is equal to, which if we remember, as always, the weight is gonna be equal to mg, the force of gravity is mg. So 
the normal force is also going to be equal to mg. Alright, so that's m1g, and the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force. So we know that the friction force is going to be mu times the normal force, which is mu times m1g. So there's our magnitude of the friction force. Now to find the acceleration, the acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces, the net force, uh, that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. And in this case, since these two forces cancel out, the only net force we have is the friction force. But it's pointing to the left, so we're going to have to talk about the way that we're going to sum those forces up. Since it's moving to the right, I'm going to call to the left a negative force, because it's in the negative direction. So to find the acceleration, first we're going to sum up the forces. So there we go. We get this expression there. Solving for the acceleration gives us If we cancel the masses, we get that the acceleration is equal to negative mu k times g. And so, if we plug our numbers in there, we can actually get a value for the acceleration. Let's add that to our knowns. All right, so the next step would be, we're trying to find this final velocity here. And to do that, I'm going to go back to kinematics. Once you found this force, you could have used energy using work to figure out the final velocity. I'm going to go back to our old standby of kinematics. So let's do that real quick. We know the acceleration, we know the initial velocity, we're looking for the final velocity, and we know the distance. So let's get in there, or the displacement. Let's get into the only thing we don't have is the time, so we're going to use our v squared equation. And in this case, our final velocity is this v here, this v1, and our initial velocity is this v0. So here we've got our kinematic equation. We plugged in all of the values that we have, the initial velocity, the acceleration we just found, and the distance, and so let's calculate this. So when we plug those numbers in, we get 55.425, and that's units are meters squared per second squared. So to find out this final velocity, we got to take the square root of both sides. And what we get here is that this final velocity of this portion at the beginning, where it's moving on its own, sliding with friction, is 7.445 meters per second. So let's add that to our knowns. Okay, now with those numbers all calculated and out of the way, the last thing that we can do at this point, we know the initial velocity of both objects, and we know that together they have a final velocity that's equal to the same thing. And that's what we're looking for. That's our unknown. That's what we're keeping our eye on the prize for. Oh, and actually, I wrote this up here instead of down here, but this is what's equal to 7.445. It's no longer an unknown. And now we'll get into this. I'm going to erase this side so we can finish this problem off. All right, so what we're going to use for this last step, and this is the part that's really about this unit, all the rest of it was just sort of to get us to this point. A little bit of window dressing because Sometimes, once you get really good at these conservation momentum problems, they get to be pretty easy. And so we've got here the initial momentum, which is the mass of the first object times the velocity of the first object. That's the momentum of the first object plus the momentum of the second object. And we know in this case, V2 is actually equal to zero, so that term's going to go away. But before we get rid of it, let's take a look at our total equation. We've got this. The initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. There's some things we can do to simplify this for this particular problem. The first was what we talked about, canceling this out. The second one is noticing that these two velocities are equal because 
there's just one final velocity. It's actually m1 plus m2 together that are moving because they stuck together. So let's simplify this equation down. There we go. And so this is our equation so far. We're trying to solve for this final velocity. So I'm just gonna do this algebraically before we even plug any numbers in. So let's see what we get. And so when we divide both sides by m1 plus m2, it cancels and we get this equation right here, which this is the equation that applies for an inelastic collision where one object's moving and the other one's at rest. If we added another plus m1 or m2 v2, then that would be a general equation for an inelastic collision. And this is what we're gonna use now to solve this problem once and for all. So we get that the final velocity is equal to 3.13 meters per second. And that's our answer for this question. Hopefully this approach makes some sense to you. We go through step by step. We look at the setup, we translate the problem, and we see all the different parts. We figure out we need this velocity to be able to use momentum in this problem. And the reason why we can do this, we can use momentum right here is because it's a collision. And we can consider momentum to be conserved there because of that impulse, uh, that short impulse uh, approximation. And so as these collide, the forces between the blocks are gonna be much larger than friction, so we can treat it like momentum is conserved, uh, even though it's slowing down as it moves along. And eventually this would slow down to a stop some distance later, you could calculate that for yourself. It would actually continue to accelerate at this minus 2.45 seconds or meters per second per second in case you wanted to do that calculation. So that's it for today. I'll see you in class.